everybody, it's Ed. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is a video I've been wanting to make for a while, but it's taken me a little while to get this started and to get it kind of in a, in a place where I thought it was the most useful in communicating kind of how I'm using Obsidian now with my Supernote. As you know, the Supernote is my go-to for taking uh, notes at meetings, taking notes at conferences, and, and really kind of processing in my thoughts in a way that are um, easy for me to both understand and to later revisit. About three weeks to a month ago, I started playing with Obsidian, and we'll talk more when we get into the, the demo. But the idea behind that is, you know, it used to be when I was on the road a lot and I was working with different campuses, that I'd make all these connections in my head and I could pull those with recall pretty easily. Well, one thing I've noticed over the years as I get older is that it's a little bit harder for me to always be able to have that instant recall. And then I found uh, Nick Milo and Obsidian uh, and Dan Burr and how it links uh, notes and thoughts together, as well as other things. I mean, you can link files, you can do all kinds of different uh, functions with that. And then I found that they were beta testing the Supernote plugin and I signed up and I pulled that in and it was amazing what it can do. Uh, and it's not like it's, you know, all kinds of bells and whistles, but again, it doesn't have to be. It pulls in the data in an easy to read way and an easy to engage with way so that you can then uh, categorize and collect your thoughts and then edit those and turn those into living documents. You know, being able to take the handwritten text, have the Supernote convert that into type text, and then put that, both formats of that, into Obsidian and clean all that up is really cool. Just so you'll know what I'm working with in this video really quickly, uh, I attended the Midwest uh, Scholarship of Teaching and Learning Conference today. It was phenomenal. It always is. It's held at Indiana University South Bend, and it's just uh, a great time. A lot of really good information, scholars and teachers just really talking about how to engage and reach your students and traveled there with a, a lot of uh, Valpo faculty. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I went last year and I have my super note notes from last year and they're already in Obsidian, but I thought what a great way to be able to demo this. So I put my session notes and I'll do that live and walk you through that as we go along. It'll be really interesting to see how all of those connections work in Obsidian throughout the years and being able to tie them to different uh, trains of thought, different ways of thinking about knowledge, and I think it'll be a really great, uh, great experience. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the demo. All right, here we are with my Supernote uh, Cloud Drive and my Windows Explorer tabs open. And I'm going to walk you through how I get my notes into Obsidian. Uh, this is something I've been playing around with for about the last oh, three to four weeks. I mentioned it a while back, and it's really starting to, to make a difference in the way I think about note-taking, connecting things, making things more um, enjoyable, easier to find. And I just wanted to walk you through the process since I just attended a conference, and I need to get those notes now from my super note into Obsidian. So we're going to start over here on the left-hand side of the screen. And you'll see uh, I use the Supernode Cloud, which works really well for me. You could also do this with OneDrive, Dropbox, or Google. It really doesn't matter what system you use. It's just all about your flow. I'll go ahead and select all of these files. These are the notes I took throughout the day at the conference. And then I will hit uh, Download. When I hit download, you're going to see they all pop in. And I went ahead and opened these tabs so it would be a little bit easier to see all at once. And here they are. So they went right in. I've also already over here in a separate tab created 
the conference. And what I did was I opened my Obsidian Vault in Windows Explorer. I just find that's a little bit easier sometimes to pull files into, and it auto-populates then into Obsidian. Now, I do have the Supernote plugin installed. Uh, you can install that two different ways. If you want to be on the beta, you can install it like I did originally through the Brat plugin, and I'll have links below in the descriptions for that. But you can also uh, install it as an authorized app now. So Obsidian has it in their regular community plugins. So if you just want the stable release, you can always install it there as well. So now I'll just select all of these and I will drag them over into my 2024 conference folder. Now, when I go into that, you'll see there they are. And I will go ahead and open Obsidian. Now you'll see I pretty much replicate my file structure here in the left hand side. And when I go to this now, you'll see all of my notes right here along the left. Now, what's really cool about this plugin, and I'm still trying to figure out the best way for me, you'll see my map is filling in quite a bit here. It's getting connected, I'm getting larger nodes. But when you process the nodes, and this is what's really neat, so the first thing you have to do is you have to have a real-time recognition note because that's how it goes ahead and recognizes your notes. Now, it's not 100% perfect, but it does a decent job. And then in this, and this is a static image, so I can't edit this. It's not a note that I can edit in Obsidian, but these two pieces at the top. So I can copy just the markdown files, so just the text. I can also copy the markdown file and the images, and then that'll give me that information and I can see all of the original notes, and it separates them out by page. One thing I am experimenting with, and I'll show you how we do this, so if you hit Attach Markdown and Images to Vault, when you do that, you'll notice now all of a sudden I have three PNG files, and I have a new Markdown file for that. When I click into the Markdown file, now this is editable, but it also has this source note, which takes me back to that main page. So I'm not 100% sure if I want to eventually, after I edit all of these, I like how it's got page one. It's got my converted text followed directly by my handwriting. And I can go ahead and tidy all that up, move it all onto one page here at the top, and then just save the images as a drop down. So you can create a new title really easily. So if I go to that note, let's say I want to create an images folder. So I could do the title space or hashtag space that creates a title and then images or image files. Now, when I'm done with that, I click this and it'll hide the, anything below that and it's a it's a really useful and functional tool for that. But I'm not sure if I want those when I have that source note. I guess it's kind of nice to have them if I want to keep one or if I have a blank page and I want to delete it. It can make it a little bit easier to clean things up and tidy them up. Or if I want to know exactly how many pages I had in a in a very streamlined way. So as I figure that out, I'll, I'll let you all know what I kind of land on. I could also just take these images, clean this completely off, and just leave them over here on the left side at the top. You'll see attachments. So if I were to expand that, and it's got work information, so I don't want to do that right now, I could have all of these PNGs and all of these original note files, and that's what's in there now, for everything I've converted up till now. It's a pretty easy process. You just make sure, A, you do a real-time recognition note. B, you export it into the folder you want it to be in. And then you just come in and interact with the note. And again, it's very simple to give this just a second to load. You'll see this one has eight pages, which means there were eight handwritten pages here. 
and I can choose whether or not I want just the markdown file of the text or the images along with that. And, you know, to be, to be honest, it is a lot of fun. To me, this is all about intentionality. The same reason that I set my Supernode up to be very much an intentional device that allows me to take notes, be present in the moment, but still have access if I need it to my Google Calendar, to my Gmail for work. I can still do those things, but that's not the primary reason for the device. Again, same way with this. I'm not super fancy. I'll put a, a link to Nick Milo, which is linking your thinking down in my description. He is phenomenal at telling you how to design, how to really make things pop and look really good in Obsidian. But he's also a lot, uh, a lot of fun to listen to because he gets it. He understands that it's not so much uh, the tool as how you use the tool. So for him, yes, he has his what he calls his light kit, his linking your thinking kit. It's very well developed. It's a really cool way to think through this. But he also encourages you to think on your own. Like, how am I going to process this information? One last thing on this really quickly. When I go back to the map now, you'll see that the map will change a little bit. You'll see things are moving around a little. And again, I'm not going to go through because this is my work notes. But you're starting to see more things fill in. Uh, as I add more and more notes, attachments, different things like that. There are ways to clean this up. So you can do existing files, you can do tags, which I haven't started using yet. Uh, but it, it gives you a lot of control here. And I will see you here in just a minute. All right, everybody, welcome back. Thank you again so much for uh, going through this with me. Hopefully you found it useful. Uh, like I said during the demo and even in the introduction, if you uh, have the ability to go to a local or even national uh, scholarship of teaching and learning conference, I would highly recommend it, especially if you're in the academic field. Uh, there are research conferences which are wonderful as well, but this really kind of takes it and brings it into that classroom level and, and gets you thinking about, you know, how do we actually communicate things we want to do with our students? Uh, it's really important to uh, then be able to not just capture that for a day, because I think most of us understand that when you go to a conference, you get really excited because there's so much cool stuff happening. And you come back to campus with all of these great ideas and then realize that the day to day gets in the way of that. And you've got to really pace yourself. This between my Supernode and now having the ability to use Obsidian on top of that as a layer, that whole idea of intentional tech and being able to use multiple tools and apps to create an environment where I can capture the excitement of taking the notes and having been in the space, bring that back, process it in a way that still keeps it in my orbit. And of course, the map in Obsidian is kind of a beautiful thing because it looks like orbiting ideas all the way around. So I can capture that, you know, maybe what you call lightning in a bottle and, and keep it there for when I need to go back to it. As always, thank you again for sticking with me. Hopefully you watched the whole video. Even if you didn't, Please, you know, remember uh, that you can always come back and watch more. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I would love to have more people join the conversation. We have an active community and I try to respond as, to as many comments as I can. And I would love to hear what you have to say. Are you using Obsidian or some kind of personal knowledge management system? Uh, is this how you would use the Supernode? What do you think of the plugin? All of these are really interesting things to me that I want to find out more about, find out the best way to use them. As you can see, I'm still exploring, but what are you doing? What are ways that we can learn from each other to make this an even more successful experience moving forward? So again, like, subscribe, thank you. We're getting really close. We're up to about 2,300 watch hours. Uh, we're well over 500 subscriptions now. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And until next time, 
I hope you're well and I will talk to you soon.